What's up, Stogie Geeks listeners? Joe Hosemper here, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood, a.k.a. The Italian Styling, telling you about a little giveaway that we have going on. We've teamed up with our sponsor, J.C. Newman, this year to give back to the Stogie Geeks listener. They've been such an awesome partner so far. They've decided to give away one Diamond Crown humidor per quarter to the winner that they choose. All you got to do is log on to stogiegeeks.com forward slash Diamond Crown. Click on the enter to win button. It's really that easy. So if you're smart and you want an awesome humidor for your home collection, go to our website, stogiegeeks.com. Find that banner ad right on top. Click on it and register to win that humidor. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to segment two of Stogie Geeks. This is episode 308. You can go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 308. You can find out who we interviewed. If you're just showing up on the live feed, you're a little bit too late, but that's all good. I want to give you a message about Placencia Cigars. Go to stogiegeeks.com, click on that logo. You can follow where you can get your Placencia Cigars. Placencia Cigars is one of the world's leading growers in first-class tobacco. As they have been pioneers in the industry since 1865, five generations of the Placencia family have continued in the legacy of Nicaragua and Honduras. Today, the Placencia family's very own cigar line, led by CEO and master blender Nestor Placencia, produces over 40 million handmade cigars each year. Placencia Cigars celebrates their Nicaraguan roots through their premium Alma series, inclusive of the complex blends of the Alma Fuerte, the Ama del Campo, Campo, which is a phenomenal smoke, by the way. And their newest release, the Ama del Fuego, each harvested in the pure soils of Nicaragua. Drew, sticks of the week. All right. How's it going over there, Joe? It's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. Well, you, you, you sound phenomenal. Good, good. I'm so excited. We finally uh, fixed that mic thing. So. The sound? Okay. Yeah, I uh, went to the uh, uh, clean up the mic here. But anyhow, here we go. So, hello, everybody. Hello, so Geek listeners. Today, I'm going to kick it off with the Eric Espinoza 601 La Bamba Warhead Maduro box pressed 6x52, and it's in limited quality. Buy and run you about 100 bucks. And this cigar, I'm going to tell you right now, man. It's some so uh Warhead features a similar core recipe to the original six of cigar, only the wrapper leaf has been swapped out for a hearty Connecticut broadleaf Maduro variant. The results is a performance that simply must be experienced to be appreciated, showcasing heavy nicotine content and a surprise amount of flavor to balance. So that being that, I said, okay, it's my turn. Here we go. Uh again, wrapper Nicaraguan. Uh, a handmade rock and filler, so uh, it's a puro, puro cigar, excuse my language. <laughs> uh, binder Nicaraguan, uh, factory La Zona factory, uh, in Estel, Nicaragua. The history on this, uh, the Warhead series started back in 2013, uh, it was a six and a half by 54 back then, and then Warhead 2 in 2014, uh, 23 in 2016, and then it skipped a year. And then it went down to the 2018 uh, uh, Warhead uh, 4, and then uh, uh, 6x48, and then now we have the present 2019 version of the Warhead. So, looked at the cigar, looked at it. I mean, this everything about it. So, let me just talk about, about the cigar. First, get it. I mean, it's just really nice and, and boxed, uh, very nice and, and tight. Uh, just everything about it, the presence. The bands, uh, just a beautiful cigar. Uh, I mean, very nice, ripe red look at, looking cigar. Uh, when I the when I first got into it, uh, of course, I did a t- uh, a cold draw and everything that I was already experiencing just on that uh, in that segment. Tell me, I was going to get what I wanted. So definitely, tons of pepper at the beginning, uh, spice. Uh, unique very unique uh i there was some some spice i couldn't really put my fist but it was just one of those rich leathery uh cigar and uh 
you know, once 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 it started to get going, uh, it warmed up. Uh, to hell, you definitely get that spice and and pepper coming through, and you really appreciate the aroma as you're going through this phase, uh, and uh, in your cigar smoking experience. Uh, from there, uh, in the second half, uh, second third of the cigar, started to notice a little bit of espresso, and again, uh, the the heatiness of the aromas just really come through in the spice. And man, the cigar for me was just. One of those ones where I, I I definitely want to have a box. So my rating on this cigar is going to be a box where, as I said, they only come in a box of ten. They're very limited. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to grab one of these, so you might as well grab a box uh, as you know, and 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 just stick it in the humidor, age, let it go through its process, and I guarantee you, it's 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 going to get uh, uh, awesome as the time goes through. Uh, so Espinosa 601 La Bamba Warhead 5. It's showcased in a uh, fan favorite size 6x52 box press Toro format. Uh, these weapons of mass destruction are inbound with all new foot band design, uh, signifying your release, and finished the, uh, with the cigar signature bomb fuse cap. Boom. There it is. Boom. <laughs> Boom. No pun intended. They, that cigar sorry. is the bomb. It is the bomb. <laughs> have you? Uh, yeah. Have, oh, yeah. Have you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I were to just, you know, sum up what you said, uh, super leather towards the end, high nicotine content. Uh, don't over drink with it because it will kick your butt. Make sure you no. eat with it. Make sure you've had, yep. you, you're not smoking that on, a, on an empty stomach. And um, super, super cool pe- uh, pepper on the retro hail. I do because it's a box. It's available oh, yeah. in box of ten, and the price is right. I'd 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 agree with with, oh, yeah. with with that rating for sure. Awesome, easy, easy peasy. All right, what I, you got? I had the Rockefeller Vintage Nicaraguan Maduro Churchill. I will repeat that: Rockefeller Vintage Nicaraguan Maduro Churchill. This is a Mexican San Andreas Maduro wrapper. Binder is Ecuadorian. Filler is from Nicaragua. It's available in the Robusto Toro, the BP Toro, the the Toro Gordo, the Torpedo, and the Churchill. I had the Churchill 7x48. I had the Robusto 5x52, and I also had the Toro 6x52. I uh, totally pepper retrohale, a little bit of uh, citrus to start. You know, you get that woody citrus uh, kind of kick uh, kick off over there, uh, and then from then, um, I did a bullet cut with with this stick. Let me make sure. Yeah, I checked my notes. I did a bullet cut with with this stick, and I I find with if if you're able to to do a bullet cut, you really can get that leather component or that tar build up towards the end. Uh, if it leaves me wanting more, which this did. Um, I, I, you know, I really get that strong leather that kind of s- s- stays on your palate and whatnot. Uh, I did give it a box split uh, for sure. You know, um, I, I'm, there are other um, cigars from that from that uh, line, the Rockefeller cigars that I like a little bit better. Um, however, uh, I did give it a box split. I would definitely shovel through 10 of these in, in the course of a year. There's no question. Oh, yeah. Most and definitely. I wish that they had more presence here in Rhode Island. But they are available next door, so I have access to them. So, yay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Makes my life easier. <laughs> Makes my life easier for sure. What's your next exactly. one? That's nice. When you... So my next one is going to be the CAO Amazon Basin Orleana. It's a 62. It's a limited edition. Uh, I don't know what happened to me this week. All of a sudden, I started with these limited editions. And here we go. So uh, this cigar, uh, the name is an homage to Francisco de Orleana, uh, the first uh, European explorer to travel the entire Amazon. Uh, read a little history about him. Pretty cool. Super cool guy. If I was back in those days, I'd want to kick it with him. Uh, the blend uses a very special wrapper called Cubra, uh, which the company says is aging longer than the original. Uh, I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna massacre this word, but it's Rakunga in the Amazon base uh, in the Amazon Basin cigar. 
So Cubra is a sun grower uh, in the uh, in the microclimate of the eastern Brazil, uh, eastern Brazil's Fortaleza region. Here's a collective. Uh, here, there's a collective uh, local park with CAOs ergonomous uh, uh, to grow this leaf. Uh, they, they selected by means of Cubra for this blend, which then rested in a climate controlled curing barns in Calafriza. Um, I know I'm butchering the names. Uh, this cigar, it has a Habano flavor with the Lobitas, and it pairs very well with other tobaccos, which is why I think Rick Rodriguez. Uh, when he when he said uh, in one of his other uh, uh, statements he made it was when he found this when he found Cubra, he knew he wanted to blend with some other tobaccos from the previous Amazon uh, release. So hands down, this uh, rapper is one of the best uh, 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 in his opinion uh, ever used in the blending. So so here I am with this cigar, and I don't know if anybody has seen this. It's, uh, I should have brought one with me. It has a rope wrapped around it uh stows through this rope it looks pretty interesting i looked at it the, i mean the, the presentation was beautiful uh you could tell the work of the leaves uh everything was rolled very nicely tight and just the the the, the wrapper itself the color uh kind of a uh reddish uh almost a reddish like a like a coffee bean a little bit on the dark side i've managed to it uh, but yeah, very nice cigar. Uh, so this this cigar is a uh, strength cigar. Uh, it does tend to get a little heavy uh, towards the end. Uh, interesting, um, but nonetheless, uh, it, it 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 definitely uh, it definitely uh, came through uh, for me. So uh, medium flavor. Uh, the taste like was uh, spice, uh, dark fruit, uh, a lot of leather. Uh, uh, then you and then it transitioned into a little bit of oak earth, a little earthiness there. Uh, leathers uh, and the peppery spice kind of marry together. Uh, and then you get a little sweetness. You get a surprise. Like, wow, what is that? And that surprise either uh, for me, it was, it was a mix of dried fruit. Uh, and what I mean by dried fruit, like uh, if you had something like a, uh, like a dried apricot, a little, just that little scent, uh, hint there. Mm. Uh, also molasses. There was a little bit of molasses in it. It did taste. I was thinking it was honey, but then once I went in for the, for another, uh, for that, I, I, I could taste the molasses, uh, there. Uh, like I said, uh, towards the end, the leather came through kind of heavy, uh, which to me led it to be a more heavier toasted nuts. Uh, definitely you get that in the end. And, and man, this was, uh, was a, quite a bit of a, uh, 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 as I was smoking a cigar and the rope was burning, <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, yes, me and Francisco are on this trip and we're going down the Amazon River. Uh, I gave this cigar a Stogie Gate rating of I'm going to fight Chuck Norris for it and oh, I'm going to win. There you go. And, and then I woke and then I woke up, <laughs> but no, I won. <laughs> nice. Uh, the cigar, uh, I, I definitely, uh, I, I definitely would uh, fight Chuck Norris for it. Uh, and I don't, you you won't be disappointed in CAO's uh, 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 version uh, of the Amazon Bay cigar. Yeah. And oh, also, so this stick, I mean, just just to let you know, ten bucks. Yes. Comes in a box of twenty. That's where I was going. So for yep, yep. yeah. Yeah, looks for a box of 20. You could buy a box, but uh, you know, for me, uh, this are uh, yeah, I I definitely uh, I'd still fight Chuck Norris for it. Now, just as- I was gonna mention the price, and you did. Um, uh, did you make the rookie move of trying to take off the rope? No, I, I, I hate no. bands on my cigars, right? I just at first, I'm like, I light it. You know, get it going. Make sure it's cool. Take a couple pop. Band comes off. I made the mistake <laughs> of trying to like peel off the thing, and I screwed it up. And then because it's got that, uh, believe that pectin glue, that there that it's attached. Uh-huh, the that's pectin the pectin glue that holds and, it. And I will go and work. Uh, 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 you got the visual right. I'm like I'm trying to patch it up yeah. and whatnot, and I'm like shit. I'm like I'm really screwing this cigar up. <laughs> and this cigar is super awesome. Um, so uh, I threw it out. Yeah, grabbed another one. 
my ADD was kicking in. It was driving me nuts with the rope. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mm-hmm. it, it is a really it, it is a super cool stick it is it is an awesome stick and the price point's awesome you know so. yeah you can't beat that yeah nomi was telling me when he gave it to me he's like take the rope off he goes i can't tell you how many customers have come back in and wanted me to exchange i'm like oh yeah i mean that's part of the smoking uh of the cigar you've got to light it and it, it and they're they're burn you know yeah. is it gonna burn even uh a couple of times my burn went a little bit off and back leveled out yeah and so i was i was like oh okay well that's what it's that you know the 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 the, you know putting the rope behind it and then them thinking well it'll come back it was a forethought so yeah it's awesome yeah (laughs) yeah i'm representing with my cao hat today just fyi if you're You're wearing a what a cao oh whoops cao hat oh yeah see that yeah and you know i'm gonna tell you a story about this hat right (laughs) I, I was rocking this uh, hat. It was in a public setting, no cigars. And my friend goes, why are you wearing a hat that says dog? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right? Because CAO in Portuguese is dog. It's con. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess you learned something. Today. So, so, so this is my dog hat. You know what I mean? So it's got like, you right. know, it's super cool. My, my brother gave me this hat for Christmas like a long time ago. You know what I mean, and my I mom, like it. You know, yeah, and and I was called Fidel twice today already, so I guess it's doing its job. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I was awesome. Called, I was called Fidel. Hey, also, also another, also another point on the, the stick here is that this this CA Orleana is a limited edition, and it comes in one Vitola and that's the two Toro. So don't don't go out there and try to find six different, you know. Uh, sizes for yeah, this yeah. uh it only comes in one yeah. one version so yeah. well i went shopping in paul's humidor right ah <laughs> shopping <you>. right <laughs> like 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 there's a checkout over there right i found the evil genius white chapel bellicoso hold on i'm waiting for them to come flying in oh. it was what are you doing right <laughs> so <laughs> no right 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 that, that was in the wrong section actually it wasn't uh, I think that was a mistake, but uh, uh, he he might have put that in, in. But anyway, I had the Evil Genius uh, White Chapel Bellicoso. Uh, this features a Habano wrapper with an Ecuadorian sun-grown Sumatra binder. The filler has Lajero and Seiko primings in it from the Dominican Republic and the awesome place called Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, it's described as a full-strength cigar. I'd go medium, but I guess if you were new, um, it's 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 full strength, well balanced, super cool. Um, what I did some research. This was the White Chapel was a, a, originally an internal project from La Aurora, La Aurora that was working on um, for the North American market. They were looking for a more full-bodied offering at the time. Um, that they weren't really traditionally known for. And the blender um, of Evil Genius Cigars and founder um, had had this offering through the La Aurora factory. It was rolled at the La Aurora factory uh, there. And just so you know, in regards to that, uh, now I guess that company is now called uh, censored genius cigars as opposed to evil genius cigars um, which which brings me up a point of I remember I've only had one experience with evil genius cigars um, it, it was it was at a local cigar shop and they did a, 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 a tasting and whatnot and I remember thinking how I really wanted to get into their blends because they were like ultra boutique like ultra ultra boutique here in the northeast founder and all that comes from pennsylvania believes he has his shops down in pennsylvania um i don't know if we interviewed him on story geeks i know i haven't in since january 2nd of 2017 but um in regards to this stick i mean it i mean first of all it it, it was in paul's humidor so it had to be from 2015 at least um maybe even you know 24 late 2014 um, but awesome stick, well balanced, 
for me it was a medium, true medium. Love the Pennsylvania, uh, the, 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 the kind of Pennsylvania, Dominican kind of blends uh, with some of those Lajero and, and uh, Seco primings. Super cool stick. I did not know at the time, the, not the time that I smoked it, but when I first originally smoked it a couple years back when I was at the event that it was, it was a sun-grown. Uh, sun-grown certainly wasn't as popular. They were certainly out. But they're, they're, they're not as popular or, you know, when we have a lot of classic facings going to the sun drone and uh, sun grown and stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it's a cool stick. I don't want to send the Story Geeks listeners on a wild goose chase for a stick that is probably not available. Or if it's available, it might be online uh, there. But um, if I were to give it a rating and if it wasn't in, in production, um, I would certainly uh, give it a uh, fiver. Um, just because of the the, I don't think you're going to be able to find the box uh, factor. But I would give it that fiver box split for sure. That was the Evil Genius Whitechapel Bellicoso. And I wish right. that I can't wait to come down to. And I wish that oh, like, sorry, like like most of those boutiques, I wish they'd put better business models to stick around because this is pretty cool smokes for sure. I know when when Stoya Geeks nice. first started pre me coming on like 2015 2016 they were getting some super cool interviews not that we're not but you know it's it's they were getting some super cool interviews boutiques were coming in and it was it was a it was an awesome time um to be a cigar consumer for sure but i kind of wish that you know they wouldn't be so afraid of that fda um bullshit that's going on but anyway go ahead <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. So when I come down there to G Unit Studios, and I'm assuming this is all humidors somewhere in there, or is several humidors, I I'm gonna need a couple of sets. I'm gonna need some dark clothing, and shut all the lights down, and just let go through that, and uh, <laughs> escape there with some cigars from his humidor. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Well, well. I already do. did. Have to do some 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 trading, you know what I mean? He's got some super cool stuff. Very, so the, <laughs> He's got some super so cool my next stuff. cigar is the Wise Man Mado, and it's a five by fifty robusto. Uh, day, uh, it does have the words L U N C. Yes, uh, I I had to go in there and get uh, get the meaning of L U N C, and the history of it, but. Uh, so when I was reading about the about this particular cigar, it says if you look closely at the band, you'll see the words El Uense printed in small letters. That's because Iceman Maduro is an offshoot of the original El Uense, yep. which closely translates to the Wise Man, uh, and is named for the four uh, four pork look dance of Nicaragua. Uh, it is a nod to the culture but not a name that American smokers are, can necessarily uh, relate to. For the Maduro version, uh, Melillo, I'm going to put the English name on up front, causing confusion in the humidor, which was a wise move from what everybody else was saying. Uh, what's your know about this? Because I, I have never, this was my first go around with Ali Wednesday. Oh, did, the, 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 did it have a red uh, label? Uh, I'm sorry, a red background on the band or a blue? Uh, uh, this would be uh, red, red, okay, red, yeah, uh, red yeah. label. Yeah, I like the red more, more than the blue, and I believe I'm like 99% sure that the red came out first. Um, if I get email and I'm wrong, that's Drew at StoyGeeks.com. You can <laughs> you can email Drew on that one and complain about me. I will me. answer. You know, and, and you can complain about yes. me. By the way, Stoy Geeks Drew got a a uh email for story geeks and he will be posting his reviews on storygeeks.com uh very soon once we go through that methodology there so that is coming we're making yes. progress here at story geeks and your audio sounds good now it's your wi-fi but we're working on that we're getting through don't move uh, like don't move because then the camera will take up more bandwidth i don't know i don't even know if that's oh. a myth. Anyway, i'm only kidding uh <laughs> but maybe when i brought the gun show out <laughs> But what, so so to answer your question, you're asking me my experience with with that cigar. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Me? Well, actually, yeah. Well, no, I was no. talking about the Ellie Wednesday. 
Wednesday. Uh, it, it just, uh, yeah, because when I first looked at it, I'm like, oh, wow, I got an Ali Wednesday. But then when I already behind the band, because you know me, I'm the band man. That's my moniker. That's my nickname. That's that's what's out. Andrew, or Drew, the band man, Galvan. So, because I love the bands. Uh, but it said Look closely at the band, you will see the words Aluense printed in small letters. That's because the wise man Maduro of the original Aluense. Yeah. Just Pierce Phenomenal. The, 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 the Joe Zemper version, Pierce Phenomenal with the Bloody Mary, the red band. The blue band isn't too bad with the Bloody Mary. Super cool pepper component. Um, I'm going to go mm. with black pepper on this one. Retro hails, awesome. Construction's awesome. Um, he does a great job, for sure. I'd, I'd give it a high rating. So, th- oh, yeah, this one right here for me. Uh, so, again, it was. It's a full, medium to full body cigar. Uh, again, uh, Nicaraguan filler, uh, Nicaraguan binder. Again, San Andreas wrapper uh, made by Ang- Ang- Oh my God, I can't believe I haven't been in trouble today. Anganosora Leaf. Uh, factory locations in Nicaragua. Uh, me, I got a cocoa like earthiness to set the tone at the beginning. And, and I started to do some retro because I, I, I've been practicing. Uh, not practicing, just getting my retro in in, uh, in the cigars early and then consistently throughout the second uh, portion of it, carried on through the uh, through the through the last third of it. But uh, yeah, earthen sets in. Man, this cigar was uh, had a little saltiness to it, uh, which I like. Uh, uh, a little bit of a peanut, I guess, peanut salt, uh, if that's such a thing. <laughs> Uh, a little sweet, uh, uh, a little bit of. Uh, I taste a little bit of graham cracker. There's a little, little bit of that graham cracker. Uh, it d- it taste, does have a sweetness uh, to towards it. the end. That's not, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, and it, yeah, and, and then and then as you go through, uh, you get this vanilla. Uh, 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 vanilla. I, I I've been on this root beer kick for a while. That month's over with, so I can't drink any more root beer. My wife says. Uh, so there's that little bit of vanilla now is what I'm getting a little bit there. And then uh, as you get towards the uh, uh, towards the second or towards the end of that into the last third, you definitely get this really beefy kind of X finish. I mean, and I was like, man, you know, and I and I smoked this after I had a uh, had a light meal. But uh, as I said, I started to taste like that, that beefy component little it was just really complex at the end, but uh, when it all wrapped, man, this this Stogie Geek rating on this was uh, definitely a box worthy cigar. Oh yeah. Um, uh, as 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 it as I said, uh, it is a it is a standout cigar. It, it's it's uh, at some points. Uh, 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 I read some other people or some other people were telling me it's for their liking, but um, but for me, it was it was just it was just very. Uh, uh, cigar after dinner, uh, out in my cigar garden, just chilling out there with the duck. And uh, man, I, I definitely give this a, bo- a box worthy. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I had the Foundation Company Chata Oak Broadleaf. I shied away from mm. this cigar when it first came out. And the only reason being was, and I shouldn't do this, but I did, that price point is so low. For that stick, compared to other people's sticks, it was like five ninety five, and I'm like, eh, I don't know, you know, I, you know, whatever. And then I finally got to it, so I avoided it. I would say for probably for about a month or two when it first came out, and then um, to 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 my surprise, uh, I I ended up uh, having one, and I'm like, holy cow, like this is an amazing stick. You get kind of like a, a a light nutty. A little bit of chocolate in there, earthy component there. Retro hail is freaking so creamy and so good. It's it's all in the retro hail. Um, the retro hail, ironically, is lighter than the regular inhale, I guess, right? The, or the non-retro hail, uh, at least yeah. for me. So I pick up, I pick up that like nutty, chocolate sweetness, a um, little bit of pepper, awesome component. Pairs great with a Bloody Mary for sure. Uh, pairs great with scotch. Pairs great with whiskey. Uh, had it regular with coffee as well. It's super. It, it, it's very versatile. Um, 
it, it it's not for a new smoker if if uh, entry level i think that the that the that flavor profile because um i had the robusto size and it, it it's really like in in your face there um for sure but if you retrohale it's like so smooth and creamy it's awesome um with 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 that stick um that is a connecticut broadleaf wrapper binder and filler are from nicaragua um it's a four and a half by 50 it's a Rothschild child size i called it a robusto i apologize all right uh but yeah it was a four and a half by 50 like i said price points are on that five dollar range 5.95 crazy stick awesome that's the uh charter oak uh, bro- uh broadleaf um like i said if, if you're a beginning smoker um in you in your retro hail give it a shot um if not make sure you have a full stomach and and i think you, you'll be good to go uh it makes a good bridge cigar if you're trying to increase your strength profile so if you're a new smoker and you want to increase that mm-hmm. that strength profile but box worthy all day um get a box super cheap um won't break the bank it's durable as hell. You can golf with it, fish with it. I've had plenty, plenty in my over the past calendar year here, and it's, it's. I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as one of my go tos, um, but you know, it's in my golf bag. Um, it, if it's 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 readily available. Um, I know you know, but I don't golf a lot because. I've had a crazy year with my one-year-old, so um, it's not a go-to because it's in my golf bag. <laughs> but if uh, in the glory days, in the glory days when I used to golf four days a week, true story, uh, you know, uh, I, it oh, yeah. would totally be. I've been smoking that, and like I said, when it first came out, I really avoided it for for the first two months, and and then I started asking people about it and doing that, and I was like, I right, fine, and and I don't know, it's just one of those. It was just one of those sticks that I was like, man, you know. But then again, not for nothing. Uh, if you're comparing prices and you look at Steve Saka's line with with the Sobre Mesa mm-hmm. and the Micarita, and then you have the Umbagog, right? And the Umbagog is named after the lake. I think he went fishing from and, and all that. Umbagogs, I, I, I like the Umbagog better than the Sobre Mesa. So there you go. So 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 a lesson learned. You can't judge on price for sure. I should. Yeah, I should. Yeah. You know, I was bad. I misbehaved. I apologized for for the listeners for that, for 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 avoiding that for for the first two <laughs> months. But I am transparent, and every stick I review usually has a story of how it got into my palate. So I'm sharing it with you. There you go. That's it. That's my rating. You You've had that, there right? There you go. You've had that awesome. stick, right? Do you have that stick, Drew? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have that stick. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, for the record, so my next stick, I for the record, out. when I'm smoking now, changing subjects and driving Johnny nuts because I'm gonna expand a little more minutes, <laughs> right? Um, I had that the black label porcelain for the first portion of the show, right? I think if it was blind and I didn't think it would come from black label, I would probably enjoy it. But since I've had so many other stronger black labels that I've enjoyed. I'm like, ah, oh, man, that's really mild for for them. You know what I mean? But maybe they're trying to cater into yeah. something. It didn't suck. I was just like, ah, eh, you know, it, 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 it's because, of, you know, when I had that It's Black Label, I've been really getting into their stuff. I've been talking about them here on the show probably since I've been on the, this show. And then, and then they come out with this milder stick, and it did its job. I mean, it, it's mild. I knew it was going to be mild. Um, you got a little bit of uh, Pennsylvania in there. And some Connecticut and obviously uh, Nicaraguan, but you know I've smoked black labels from the that are only available at the factory that I get from a local mm-hmm. shop here, uh, Vintage Cigar Lounge. When they go and they visit the factory, yeah. they always get me like the pack. I guess you get a pack and whatnot. And so I smoked like some of their super cool strong stuff and enjoyed it. And then when I had it, I bet you if it was blind, I definitely would have gave it a higher rating. But now. Um, yeah. and my little go-to this is my emergency kit, right? Uh, in case, you know, I'm interviewing uh-huh. someone and then cigar ain't good, right? Or whatever. Or if it's good and I, I, or I run out of things. I lit up this freaking La Gloria Cubana Spanish press. This thing is phenomenal. Like, completely phenomenal. Oh, doesn't yeah, break yeah, the yeah. bank. I'm, I, 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 I think I reviewed it. I'd, I'd have to check, but, uh, pff, so, it, Go out there and get some La Gloria Cubana Spanish Press. It's got a little purple label. You can tell the difference than the regular line of La Gloria Cubana. It's not a series R or anything like that. 
totally enjoyable. Anyway, nah. there you go. I don't know. I'm just random. I, I like to do that once in a while. Awesome. It's the format of how security we no. can does things and whatnot. We like to talk about birds and cigars and stuff. Uh, to what you were saying. Yeah, to 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 top that top it up, but to elaborate on what you were just saying about the cigar not being as powerful as versions or previous offerings. Uh, I talked to a few guy, uh, people in the industry, uh, and they were saying how they were, you know, they're capturing a new uh, demographic, you know, right now. So, you know, they they have these 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 cigar reviews like ours. And from that, and they go and and try to develop something along that line so that they can grow the the, the new smoker or the new hobbyist into our cigar industry, and and that was pretty cool, dude. That's that's definitely transitioning. Oh yeah, and uh, and it's and, happening out there. and 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 it happens on the other side, right? You have Avo mm -hmm. or uh, Romeo and Julieta. Um, who are classic facings that are mm -hmm. transitioning into some of the Nicaraguan blends, and some of them have done it very successfully uh, right. there. And you know, it's expanding your market. But like I said, I would have totally gave it a better rating if I hadn't known it was a black label. That's all. Right. So my next cigar I have is going to be something I it was uh, I, I've never had the, uh, this this facing of cigars are. Uh, this one's called the Don Julio. Oh, yeah. uh, Don Julio is a, tri is a tribute to Don Julio Samuel Ray's Furman. So, uh, I mean, it's part of my hand. It's it's beautiful. I mean, it's just, I mean, and again, I think the person who gave it to me to, to enjoy the cigar, uh, he had already, uh, I guess, had already had aged it. And, hey, you know, just, just go smoke it and, and, and write your review. And, and he goes, you will not be disappointed in that, in fact, uh, just you know that I'm like okay, so uh, it's a hand cigar. The tobaccos are exclusively grown and selected in the Reyes family fields, located within some, the Cibao Valley. Then they are carefully blended by expert cigar. Yet the family passion uh, comes through in, the, in their in their work. So uh, this uh, uh, Nicaraguan uh, strength is medium. Wrapper is a Corojo Merdo. So, uh, Cor uh, the binder Cor uh, Corojo Unico Bono 2020 Lejero, which is one of my oh, when I hear Lejero, I just go crazy. Uh, cause, uh, HVA Lejero and uh, Pilito, uh, Mojarado Lejero. I think they were just putting all these words together and 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 just to throw me off, but whatever. <laughs> they come in a box count of 24. Uh, there's five opportunities to enjoy a Don Julio. Uh, 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 Punto Hispada is the name of the cigar. So uh, they come in a Robusto. They come in a Bellicoso. I got a Bellicoso. Uh, Paca, a Gordo, and then a Guiente. Uh, not the Guiente, not the Bellicoso. The Bellicoso is still in my humidor for later. Uh, taste notes on this was, man, right at the right at the offset, onset was a cedar. I mean, the cedar, uh, a char, it just came through right right at the light and we are just watching it burn you know i actually took my time with this cigar this cigar took me a total of an hour and i'm gonna say 46 45 minutes 46 minutes so i timed it I had a timer uh and because i i had never smoked a cigar uh you know you know that that was in this uh a ring gauge size as far as the this largeness of it <laughs> uh but i took my i took my time with it uh lofty on the second on the second uh second third of this cigar and this cigar just in i mean i just kept going i paced myself every two minutes went back to it uh retro hells uh i even tried the russian the russian hell because uh, a friend of mine's in this Russian hell where you kind of let it out your mouth and take it in through your nose, yeah, and then come back out your nose uh, on a retro. So Those Russians are bored because it it's too it much snow. All right, <laughs> but man, it was it, yeah, it was very hard. Uh, but uh, yeah, so then uh, yeah, then started coming like some of the uh, uh, some of the, uh, the 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 ninety, and I really couldn't put my hand on it. Or my finger on it, but there was a little. Uh, there was nuttiness coming through, 
uh, on the retro hell, definitely black pepper came through. Uh, it started to smooth out uh, for the second third and into the last third. Uh, the sweetness of citrus started to come through, uh, and it, it just it just really developed into a a, a really enjoyable cigar. Uh, uh, the cost on this cigar, though, the box will set you back about three hundred sixty bucks. Yeah. Um, you know, my wife sees all the credit card statements, so I would definitely do a box one <laughs> and maybe <laughs> ask her to get me this get get me this for Christmas. Yeah, sure. And and, and, and it, it, I'll be fine. But uh, yeah, very nice cigar. Uh, the family history on this cigar of it that uh, Don Julio was a legendary tobacco grower who took the reins of the third generation of the Reyes family uh, throughout the entire process of elaborating this cigar blend. Uh, to uh, what uh, it was held in, in the hearts and minds uh, and uh, to to objectory uh, in, in 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 our industry. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I talked to people who have smoked it. Uh, they said that this is one of their favorites. And, uh, you know, other than that price point, it's one of those cigars where you can definitely, uh, uh, I think it's like 15 to 19 bucks too bad. But in this, in this case, I, I definitely would go, I would, I would definitely go box. Uh, and if I, and if my wife blessed, blessed the purchase, I'd definitely get me a box. There you go. There you go. I have not had so, a Don Julio in a long time. I, yeah. I have just so, I, I, I you've 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 rekindled my my uh interest. My interest. Uh I just, you know get bombarded with stuff being shipped here and, and stogies of the week and doing that and, 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 and life and work and all that stuff. And it's like, I really, I just really haven't had one in a, I'm going like 2016 at least, you know? Yeah. So yeah, a lot of the, yeah. a lot of the, the guy who sent me this one, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, in Montana, he's retired and man, I'll tell you, I mean, the pictures he sent me of him uh, on his ranch, uh, on his gator, at the on his pontoon, all these nice cigars, and he's just enjoying the life right now. Yeah. Uh, God bless him. You know. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. Awesome. Yeah, I haven't had one in a while. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll make an effort to 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 get one and or some and and do them up. I just yeah. just haven't. You know, you get. Market's flooded for sure. We can sit and talk stogies of the week for an awfully long time. Uh, that's for sure. One thing's, one thing's for oh, sure yeah. with these reviews. Mine are like, yeah, it's great, <laughs> and you, you all giving. I gotta step up my <laughs> my my review process for sure. Uh, you know, yeah. but I, I really appreciate you taking the time out and and giving the history for the listeners uh, for sure. But speaking of short reviews, I had yeah. <laughs> I had uh, Black Label Work, I'm sorry, uh, Black Work Studio Boondock Saint. Super cool movie, if you haven't seen it. Um, it's filmed here yeah. in, 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 in beautiful Boston. You saw that movie, right? Yeah, you bet. That's, that's, a, that's <laughs> awesome a, movie. I like it. That's an amazing movie, man. Like, if you're tired. And 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 you want to get like, and you're not allowed for medical prescriptions to drink coffee or caffeinated drinks. Just watch that movie. <laughs> yeah. if, if that doesn't fire up, call your psychiatrist and or whatever or so, whatever. Oh, yeah. You know that that's a super cool. Yeah, you'll movie. get. You know, you'll get a yeah, you'll get a dose of adrenaline sitting in that seat yeah. watching this movie. Yeah, I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, in regards to getting back to 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 the stick. You have a, a Pennsylvania broadleaf wrapper, Nicaraguan Habano binder. Um, your filler is uh, from Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and Nicaragua. Um, it's available in a Corona Lager. That's a six and a half by forty-six. It's available in a Robusto. That's a five and a quarter by fifty. I've had both. Um, I go back to this stick a lot. Uh, it's it's readily available next door. Um, your medium may be full in regards to to, to strength. Um, all day, every day, box worthy uh, stick. Um, I get uh, some pepper on the retrohale. 
um, for sure. Um, you, you, you leather, I bullet cut it. So, you know, you get, get that leather component. Um, also when you're done smoking and I've had a lot of, of sticks like that, that I'm going to be talking about, like, you know, when you're done smoking and you're like, you can, you can still taste it. Right. Um, yes. According to, um, drawing a blank on the name, but I know the brand of the cigar. Oh God. It's pure soul. Um, that flavor profile. The guy who who rolls and in and in, in does uh pure soul, which again, old school ultra boutique, super cool blend. Again, kind of fell off the map. Very few shops have them. One of my clients from my business still has some left. They're like probably four years old. Um, uh, I I usually when I go there and do some work. I get them, but anyway, I'm talking about the pure soul, not the but, but that, when, when the, that savory. It's actually called umami. You know what I mean? So uh, we've gone through this whole profile. Uh, profile. He calls it kind of profile BS when we say salty, earthy, caramel, fruit. You know, fruity pebbles, unicorn, uh, stuff like that. But that that savory. And again, that, that's his theory, but that savory is that umami, and I've, I've been getting that, you know what I mean, like that, after from the boondock stage, from, from that leather component, um, like I said, pepper, white pepper, um, it's not a pepper bomb at all, but it's just well ba balanced, uh, super cool stick uh, there from Black Label uh, as well, so uh, got a little bit of, uh, you know, cedar and some dark chocolate with uh some coffee piers phenomenal with coffee ironically i haven't had it with a bloody mm -hmm. mary um but um it, it it does pair phenomenal with with coffee uh the robust both sizes are good um for sure uh i really don't notice too much of a difference within the um sizes you know because they, they are relatively i mean i th i think they're relatively close in size uh, there. So yeah, it, 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 it's a great stick. Like I said, you have a six and a half by 46. So you have 46 ring gauge and then you have a five and one fourth. Um, I'm sorry. You have a six and one fourth by 46 and then a five and one fourth, um, by, by 50. So you're, you're about the same ring gauge. I mean, I know 46, 50, I get it. I took greater than less than, you know what I mean? I get it. But yeah, um, it's available in 20 <laughs> comp boxes. It's a good stick. That's it. That's my elaboration story. Um, that's the best I can do <laughs> for, for for today, Drew. I was trying to give it a longer awesome. review to compete to compete <laughs> with your thorough knowledge of what the hell you're smoking. So I believe you have one more. Is oh, you know, I, yeah, I do have one more. It, it, it's a, it's what the new ones this year. Uh, it's the Padilla Finest Hour Sun Grown Toro. I'm telling you, I'm kicking. This week, I don't know why. All my cigars were six by sixty Grand Toro. Uh, uh, same thing. Uh, price point on this is seven to nine dollars. Uh, box about one hundred forty to one hundred seventy dollars, and 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 just depending on where you're at regionally. Uh, it was interesting about this cigar, and, and again, like I said, I, I I'm I'm geeky. I'm geekish to the point when I get the cigar, I look at it, you know, turn it all kinds of sideways. And I noticed it had like a little on it, and it and this number was six five eight alpha two three, and of course I had to get that number, put it through the, the generator, and try to figure out what that meant. And so uh, uh, I've just found out that there was just kind of like uh, uh, numbers from the cigars, uh, yeah. tobaccos yep. that were, that were, so that was pretty interesting. I, I, I don't see, you don't see that to me on, on, on a lot of cigars. Mm -hmm. Uh, you see that on a lot of his A lot of what? Uh, a lot of the, those cigars from, what is oh, that? Uh, yeah, yes. Padilla? Padilla? Yeah. Is it Padilla? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, Yeah. You certainly see that. So, anyhow, this was a uh, the medium. The profile on this one was a medium to full. The the wrapper, uh, sun grown Colorado, uh, reddish hues to it. Bono, uh, uh, the sh uh, shape was as I say was a, a Grand Toro, uh, and made Nicaraguan filler binders Habano. Excuse me, ha binder binder Habano. The finest hour will come in three 
uh, wrapper options. This cigar was released in, in January of this, started to ship in January of this year. It comes in the Oscuro uh, wrapper, Connecticut, and the Sun. Uh, Sun Grown is what I had. And I'll tell you, the cigar again, uh, the ones that it, it was just, it was just awesome. So, uh, tasting notes, uh, smooth from the burn was nice and even, uh, the retro hell gives a nice, easy, nutty cream and cedar. And I was like, cream and cedar. What, what, what am I getting? And, and of course my root beer, <laughs> I was on a root beer kick, uh, on the whole month of snow. Why it just happened that way. But that creamy and cedar, uh, leather aromas, uh, just all that coming together uh, on the second half uh, started to get a, uh, a little bit of cocoa and, again, a little bit of fruit, uh, I, I'm not, it, but not too much, just, just enough to give me that that tiny, you know, Sweetness. inkling of what it is. Yes, what is it? You know, and I'm always trying to get very geekish about it sure. and put my finger on it to give a good description uh so i just left it as like uh kind of like a date uh, i don't know if you ever had it before but that that's that's what i got from it on the sweetness part of it uh uh, uh towards the end of the uh the last third of the cigar uh again uh the leather aromas cocoa uh and cream man just put the cigar in in and a whole category for me and i'm gonna tell you this is the first time ever on this show that I've given a cigar this high of a rating. And I was, I, 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 I so I went back and had, just, just to make sure a few days later, <laughs> just to make sure I was on point with this cigar. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, there's no, there's no way I'm going to give this thing an Oasis. Uh, am I going to, I mean, it has to really earn it. And it, I mean, I had the same experience with this cigar. Nothing really changed. Very smooth. Uh, uh, it was an oasis for me. Mm. Uh, the, 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 the Nicaraguan, the cigar features a hundred percent long leaf to uh, Nicaraguan tobacco. It's gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, the, the, the foot of it. I mean, just everything that's the, the, uh, to, to the retro, uh, man, everything was just, it just came together. It was just like, wow, I'm having a, an awesome time here. Uh, so the finest hour. Uh, uh, the reason why this name came out is, uh, it, 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 from what I understand uh, from their website, the finest hour speech is probably Churchill's most famous because his back was up against the wall. And Padilla uh, wrote, uh, "The whole country and Western civilization, as he put it, Padilla, that is what the finest hour represents. We all have had our worst and finest hours." as the United States at this time. And to me, that's what this cigar is about. We take a break or celebrate your son's birth, marriage, or even winning a war. So, uh, uh, and this is before I gave it the Oasis. I, I went into his side and I pulled that up and I'm like, I got it right. It's an Oasis cigar. There you go. That's it. Now you have it. Get out there okay. and, and, and go after Drew's oasis go ahead what oh also this cigar is going to be footnote so, <laughs> so yeah so yeah finest out will be part of the company's regular production portfolio though he's already planning the limited dose of the brand later on padilla's finest hour establishes itself he's going to lancero in this cigar and uh a corona <laughs> gordo nice Gorda. nice uh so yeah so for me that i'm getting on that lancero train yeah i was like what that's pretty cool yeah man jump on the lancero and bloody mary train it's a good time oh yeah you know oh yeah it's a good time you know and when when you come in the studio well, paul's old fashions are are phenomenal just, <laughs> oh yes just you was, know very spoiled. i was watching yeah. paul's security show i'm sorry i was watching paul's security show uh, last night uh, on YouTube, it said live, so I, po I popped on on there. Yeah, and I was watching everybody there, just enjoying their drink. Like, oh man, that's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is, like, uh, that was that's the studio, and that and that's where I am right in now, uh, in, in the studio. And then on the adjacent uh -huh. wall behind me is where everyone else is, and we're all 
you know, we're all cranking emails out. Mark and John are producing the show and, and doing that there. And we're getting emails and there's still communication because the West Coast is still open for business and we're communi- sure. all, all over the world and we're, we're still working. And Thursday nights are pretty late uh, here at Security Weekly. Yeah. yeah, man. You can learn some super pretty, cool shit watching Paul Security cool. Weekly, that's for sure. Like, I mean, you know, the the yeah. the, 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 the interviews... Um, they also have a format there on the tech segments, like when you know, um, you know, where, where they do like a demonstration of software, do some stuff, and it's 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 so cool. I've learned so much over the past two years, two and a half years that I've been here uh, about what not to do on your computer, you know. So like when you fill right. out, so when you take a picture of yourself and you know find out what you're gonna look like twenty eight years from now. Um, they now have a database with your email and facial recognitions. You bunch yeah. of crazy people out there on on that Facebook or you know. Uh, anyway, Drew, today is National Taco yeah. Day. Just just so you know, Taco Day. Today is National Taco Day, so I am going out for dinner with my son and having tacos. He's gonna have. I'm gonna have a margarita, but he's gonna have his his whole milk and some tacos. So. Uh, I want to encourage nice. you to get out there and um, get some tacos today. What the hell, right? It was also National Vodka Day, I believe. They, they, it's a combination. So. Oh, is it? Oh, oh and, yeah. It's uh, vodka I, and tacos. I'm, I'm sounds, like a, sounds like a tough night. <laughs> yeah. Can't get any better than that. So. Right, right. I'm definitely looking forward to that later. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, otherwise, man, yeah. Uh, Tacos it is. Tacos it is. I want to encourage the Story Geeks listener, go to storygeeks.com, click on that J.C. Newman promo. You can enter to win, win a uh, humidor that they're giving out. Uh, also, you can uh, follow me on Twitter, at Joe Hosempa, and you can email Drew. Email Drew, uh, Drew yes. at storygeeks.com. Drew, I got a super cool email. I want to wrap this up. Um I got an email from someone. Hold on, let me switch to my Security Weekly email. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's it's it, it's titled uh, "Show 307 Top Size Feedback." Okay. Good morning, Joe. Per your request on this week's show of Stogie Geeks, which was awesome, by the way. I'm reading word for word, right? Per your request on this mm-hmm. week's Stogie Geeks, which is awesome, by the way. My top size is uh, Toro, then Robusto. My only qualification is that I think the definition of these sizes needs to be more specific in terms of ring gauge. Welcome to the industry, mm-hmm. Glenn. Welcome to the industry, right? <laughs> I'm going to make a 6x60 six and call it a super robusto. You know what I mean? Um, I do right. agree. It should be more specific. However, they make all different sizes. It's called marketing. Um it's crazy. But anyway, um, his preference is between the 58 and 52 ring gauge. But from what I hear all the time, it varies as you go up to 60. As you go up to 60, it gets, oh, yeah. it, gets it, it, it just gets different. Um, anyhow, great job on the show. And congrats to Drew for his efforts on improving each week. Right, this is, I'm re- I'm reading word there for word. Go. Right, I really noticed how tight his awesome. reviews are versus yours. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, yeah. you know, I was like, right. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, I noticed that you know, I noticed how tight his reviews are ver- versus him being a little nervous early on. It does happen. Sometimes it's not easy yeah. to get out here and talk. I stutter in real life, so I got a great excuse. Uh, there you go. Plus, I'm scatterbrained in real life, so there you go. Lastly, although I am not a super geek, I am very passionate about cigars. Uh, I'm legally blind and cannot see too much or likely at all. So most of my cigar experience hmm. is a blind taste test all the time. If you're ever interested in some customer wow. insight and in blind smoking, let me know. I would be available for my sharing experience as I have been smoking cigars for a long time. Um, keep up the great work. And then his name's Glenn. He's from Massachusetts. He gave me his address, but, you know. Um, uh, uh, I think we should I think we should do a... a, a uh, a blind, you know, Paul's done that in the past, a, 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 a blind taste test for sure. 
in a blind review. Um, yeah. I've heard rumors that he is um, coming back and clearing schedule. So uh, I think we're going to have to do that and, 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 and maybe start a panel. But, uh, Glenn, if you're watching, uh, I just yeah. want to say thank you for your response. Um, I'm, I'm glad you l listened to, to, to Stoya Geeks. And at least in Drew's descriptions, you can get a visual on the band because he is very elaborate with, with, with his descriptions. Drew, what say yeah. you? Wrap us up. Uh, yeah, I just, again, I'm, a, I'm on a, a Drew at StoeyGeeks.com. Uh, uh, Instagram, you get me on Drew Galvin Cigars. Facebook, Drew, Stoey Geeks. Uh, you can find me there. Uh, I look forward to more feedback. Uh, continue growing uh uh with with uh joe and and i I'm, I'm trying to find a great format for my cigar reviews and not only describe uh and, and give my opinion but also give a little bit of history of cigars because i i talked to a lot of my uh, patrons here at the cigar lounge here in texas uh i'm gonna give a plug prestige cigars and tobacco here in bedford texas uh so they 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 uh that we give that information out uh, to help them understand uh, the origins and, and, and the history and background of the families who are growing uh, tobaccos for our industry. Yeah. And Glenn, thank you very much for that email. That was awesome. Yeah. So see, so your reviews are better than mine. And, you know, who knows? Maybe it'll be, I'm your co-host, Joe Zemper, and hosting is Drew. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, Story Geeks, Story Geeks, next no. week we have a super cool uh, interviews lined up. You definitely want to stay tuned. You have been listening to the Story Geek Show. Keep going. Keep those emails in. Drew at StoryGeeks.com. We'll see you next week.